This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Thursday afternoon devotion on this overcast, hazy Thursday afternoon. But it's still nice outside. You can go for a walk. You can celebrate God's creation around you. You can take some time to pray and celebrate while being with God. Today we continue to look at the scripture for this Sunday's sermon of Unravel. We look in that Matthew 14 where we see the disciples being tested. Where we see the disciples having to make some faith decisions. So with all that, let us continue looking at this Sunday's scripture. Yeah? So we pick up from yesterday. Jesus had dismissed the crowds and then set the disciples in a boat. And he went up on a mountain to pray. There was a strong headwind, and then very early in the morning, he came across the water, walking on the water, to the disciples in the boat, and they were terrified. They thought it was a ghost, until he said, Be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. So picking up from there, Peter replied, Lord, if it is you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter felt the strong wind, he became frightened, and he began to sink. He shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, You must be God's son. The, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this scripture for this Sunday, we'll be looking at Peter. And Peter is one disciple I will let you know that this is not the only time that his plans unravel around him. Peter is very voicious, most vocal in his decision making. He's very rash in coming to conclusions quickly. He is a man of action and not a man of sitting and thinking about it first. He has a tendency to speak and act before he thinks. And thus, his plans often unravel. Sound like maybe something in your life? I know it sounds like something in my life. Peter is one of the disciples that I associate with quite a bit because he seems to be a little brash and a little bit more headstrong at times than he should be. But this scripture, we see Peter's enthusiasm. We see that even though the disciples were scared, that they thought it was a ghost, when they heard the words of Jesus, it was only Peter that had the instantaneous faith, had the brashness to say, Lord, order me to come to you and I will. Jesus saw something special in Peter, just like Jesus sees something special in you. And that's what we're going to be looking at, is that the fact that Jesus can see even though our plans unravel, even though the thoughts that we have start to fall apart, God has a plan for us that's been woven tightly. And that when we unravel, Jesus is there for us, just like he was for Peter on the Sea of Galilee when he started to sink, when he started to doubt, when his threads started to unravel around him. So as we think about unraveling, this feels like an awful lot of unraveling around us for the last four months. So let us look at the continued thread that continues to be pulled from our plans and the plans of this world. Yeah? Right now, there are 17 million cases of COVID-19 in the world. There are 4.4 million cases diagnosed in the United States and 43,844 cases in Iowa. Wow. That is an increase in the last 24 hours in Iowa of 649 new cases. We also have had an increase of 10 deaths in the last 24 hours to now have a total of 854 deaths in Iowa. 
We had 12 new cases in Muscatine since yesterday and five new cases in Muscatine County and five new cases in Cedar County since yesterday. When I was thinking about how to get a perspective on what has happened in the last four months, I went back and I saw this, this, this statistic. On March 29th, we were beginning to worry here in Iowa because there were now four deaths and 336 cases. Now, four months later, 854 deaths, 43,844 cases. That's quite the difference. Quite the difference. Quite the difference. That's right. Yeah, I read this morning that the total number in the United States, which I think is a little over 151,000, yes, comes out to roughly, from that four months, one per minute of person who has uh, died due to COVID-19. So it puts into perspective that this is a much bigger thing around us. Sometimes as we sit in our small town, in our small neighborhoods, and we don't have anybody recently that has been affected or affected or infected, we sometimes think that maybe it's going away and we don't realize that in a worldwide setting or an Iowa setting, we are in the midst of something that requires all of our attention. Requires all of our prayer, requires all of our due diligence to bring about healing and wholeness to our community, to our church, to our family, to our region. So with that, let us pray. As we look at the community around us, prayer concerns, some areas for you to lift up. The Aqua Tree family, continue to pray for them. Jerry's funeral will be Monday at 1030 at the Presbyterian Church. Visitation, Sunday afternoon from 2 to 5 at the Bentley Funeral Home here in Wilton. Continue to keep Doris Guy in your prayers and Judy and the rest of the family as Doris is in hospice at the Wilton Retirement Center. Continue to pray for our church family and friends who are dealing with radiation and chemotherapy, those that are recovering from illnesses and falls. But most of all today, I want you to pray for yourself. That is allowable. You can ask God to continue to work within your heart and your soul. As we looked at those numbers, it's quite obvious that the anxiety level is there. This continues to grow and to build into something that we have to pay attention to, and yet it feels so overwhelming at times. I know in my own preparation for worship and the outdoor worship and possible in-person worship, the anxiety that comes from that. And I pray for myself all the time. So I'm asking you to pray for yourself so that you continue to be diligent, that you ask for God to pour out the Holy Spirit upon you so that those gifts of the Spirit can be evident in you as we move forward, as we do things safely and, and cautiously, as we are continue to be in isolation, that we wear our masks, that we socially distance, that we continue to allow people to see us as examples of Christian love in the midst of all that's going on around us. And of course, if you're praying for yourself, it then becomes quite a natural flow for your thoughts and prayers to go to those around you, your family, your friends, your community, those in your church, as we continue to look for what God is asking of us in these days and weeks to come. So let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon those gathered around their devices. Help us to feel your Spirit, to experience those gifts to step out in love to our neighbors. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, for your words of comfort. Just like those disciples long ago, Lord, we long to hear those words. But Lord, also help us to be ready to respond to those words with acts of love and kindness. Help us to be examples of good Christian living in the midst of the unknown, in the midst of the pandemic and the virus, downturn of economics. Lord, help us to be examples of love, peace, patience, mercy, justice, gentleness, kindness. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet, your voice, your presence in this community. Lord, we ask that you be with the Huckle Tree family as they remember and mourn. Lord, be with Doris, Judy, 
the family, as they gather in comfort and remember and remembrance, allow your peace to pass over them. Lord, I ask that you continue to walk with those that are dealing with radiation and chemotherapy, those that are dealing with broken bones and bruised bodies, those that are dealing with cancer and Parkinson's, those that are recovering in their homes, recovering in treatment centers, those that are in hospital. Lord, help them to feel our love and presence even in this time of separation. Lord, we ask that you continue to allow us to prepare, to prepare to be open and welcoming in ways that are safe and sound. Be with those that are making decisions about the schools in our community. Be with this church as we make decisions about our opening and how we can do worship to those isolated, to those in our midst, and those in our region. Lord, continue to watch over each and every one of us. And Lord, I ask that you pour out your spirit upon me as I make decisions and upon each of these, your faithful members. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and the miracles that I know that we will be able to claim that you're putting before us. So Lord, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen. So as we prepare to go out, I hope that you can join us this Sunday at either 9 a.m. or 7 p.m. for our live streamed worship service to comment and to share and to worship and to continue to look at this scripture. I'll have some more things for you. Hopefully it'll be uh, edifying as well as uh, somewhat entertaining. We hope that you can share that with your friends and family so that they can join in and hear these messages that God has for us as our plans unravel around us, that God has new plans. God has a new weave ready for us to move forward. So as we go now back into our busy lives, may you continue to remember that God loves you and I love you and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Peace be with you. Be encouraged. Don't be afraid. Christ is with us. If you feel like you're sinking, cry out to Jesus, mm. and he will rescue you. Amen.